same stream. Entering the ring, Bogar Padilla. Okay, here we see Bogar Padilla entering the ring. He is a late replacement for Archie Weya, who was nixed by the commission. I guess they didn't like his physical condition. Oh. Now, he would not judge a book by its cover. His record isn't much to speak of one and one, but Alex Campanovo says that for young Ruben Ace Torres, this will be the toughest pro bout he has had to date. So it should be an interesting bout again. Um, Bogar Padilla, a late replacement for Archie Weya. His opponent, Ruben Torres. And you hear the ovation for the local kid, Ruben Torres. A bright prospect, a long, lean puncher. Back on May 11th, he scored a striking knockout here, right here in this venue. This kid seems to have some real upside. Should be interesting to see what he does against Bogar Padilla. Okay. All right, both fighters are in the ring. Let's kick it back up to Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue with tonight's Path to Glory, proudly presented to you by Thompson Boxing Promotions. This bout set for a limit of four rounds in the super lightweight division. Our judges scoring ringside are Dr. Lou Moret, Marty Dinkin, and Ray Corona. At the sound of the bell, the man in charge of the ring, Rudy Barragan. Introducing first, the fighter standing in the red corner, he enters wearing silver with black trim when he stepped on the scale. He weighed in at 140 pounds. In his third pro bout with a record of one victory and one defeat. Fighting out of Ensenada, Baja California, Mexico. Bogar Cañonero Padilla. In the blue corner. Wearing silver with red and white trim, he weighed in at an identical 140 pounds. And he enters the ring an undefeated pro with five victories. All five victories coming by way of knockout. Representing South Central, Los Angeles, California, Ruben A. All right, we take a look at the tail of the tape, and the one thing that stands out, Ruben Torres, really a lightweight, six foot even. So he certainly size is not a problem. Technically, this is a junior welterweight battle. We are going four rounds. Real quick note about Bogar Padilla, national champion in Mexico at lightweight in 2015, and the national gold medal winner in 2017. So he does come with some amateur credentials. And early on, Jose Cito, he seems to be trying to crowd the taller, lankier Torres. Yeah, I think he comes with the game plan. He knows he's going to have to pressure inside and really get, uh, get Ruben Torres' uh, uh, attention. Well, his size really stands out, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty big advantage. Uh, if Ruben Torres uh, fights and boxes the right way, uh, he should have an easier time. Torres snapping off some left hook. Seems to have real torque with that shot. Yeah, he's throwing some really tight, crisp punches on the inside. Uh, really good punches. As I mentioned before, May 11th right here in this venue, a knockout in three rounds over Sergio Gonzalez for Torres. Yeah. 
but Padilla, very sturdy early on, on the inside, trying to crowd and smother the taller Torres. 20 years old, actually took three years off from the sport of boxing. Actually attended San Francisco State for a spell. Yeah, fun fact, uh, Boga Padilla actually just made his pro debut this year. Uh, in February of this year, he's one and one. Um, took a took a loss, uh, start out, started off his career with a loss and, and got back on the victory train. This is his third fight now. Oh, the, the mouthpiece. Oh, Padilla comes out, he got smacked right on the mouth with the left hook. Under a minute to go here in round number one, it's been an active one between Torres and Padilla. Does it seem to you like Torres is one of those tall, lanky guys like a Diego Kraus? He seems more comfortable on the inside than boxing from the perimeter. Yes, I think his natural uh, fighting is uh, a lot on the inside, so uh, he feels comfortable in there. He, he looks comfortable. He's landing the better, crisper shots, and uh, even though Bogar Padilla uh, knows uh, what he has to do to try to pull off the upset, uh, Torres is handling very oh, well. Oh, good right hand. Torres letting his hands go, but Padilla certainly game. And that's the end of a good, solid round number one. And Jose Cito, you went through this process, and I've talked to Alex Campanova, the matchmaker, about this many times. He doesn't give you layups. I mean, he really makes it tough for you to kind of advance up the ladder, doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know what? Uh, my, the fight before I was signed to a uh, contract with Thompson Boxing, they put me in in a really, really tough fight, and uh, basically, the, the person that stands gets the signed contract, and, and uh, that's kind of how it goes uh, early in your career. And here we see some of the quick-fisted explosive combinations of Torres, and I believe what they put you through is what they call a baptism by fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they definitely test you, make sure you're, 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 uh, you're a future. Torres is trained and managed by the respected Danny Zamora, who has a very good young stable of fighters, which includes Ruben Villa, the featherweight out of Salinas, and Michael Dutchover, who you'll see later tonight in the main event here at the Doubletree. We begin round at number two, Ruben Torres, Bogar Padilla. Yeah, Ruben Torres is off to a good start. Uh, Ruben also made a made his pro debut last year. Has yeah. been pro for about a year. Is off to a good record, five and zero, and looking nice. Uh, and uh, even though his opponent's records are a combined record of two and nine, he's definitely showing some experience, some game fighting right now. Well, I don't think there's any doubt. As someone who has seen all his Torres' fights before, this is certainly the most he's been tested physically. He's getting pushed, getting backed up, and he's facing a durable guy in Padilla. Oh. oh, good left hook there by Torres. Mm. And Torres digs to the body with the right hand, but Padilla, undaunted, stays right in the pocket. Yeah, Padilla reacting really well to some well-placed uh, shots by Torres. Oh, good right hand on the button by Torres. And once again, the mouthpiece comes out with a straight jab right down the middle from Torres that knocks it out. That's the second time if it happens again, we might get a point deduction. Quick note about Torres, part of the system of Danny Zamora. Got a lot of sparring with Manny Robles Jr. and world champion Danny Roman for this fight over at Legends Gym. That young, that, that sparring for young fighters is so important, isn't it? It's really important. It's, uh, it helps you mature. Uh, you learn a lot. Even uh, 
you got to get in there and get beat up by some of the yeah. world champions yeah. early on. But, hey, uh, it's an investment worth it in the, in the near future. Yeah, Ruben Torres uh, trained by a really good trainer, Danny uh, Zamora, uh, who's uh, been in the ring with me as well. Danny Zamora, some other world-class fighters he's had in the past, Yanni Perez, and of course, Darlis Perez. Padilla having some pretty good moments here. Oh, ooh, ooh. boy, Padilla's got a chin on him, Jose Cito. Yes, he's uh, taken a few shots already and has reacted well. He's a game tough fighter, though. We are halfway through and Ruben Torres is finding out they don't always fall when they're hit. Certainly been his toughest professional test to date. Going back to our Facebook feed, uh, Jose Rodriguez says, Keith Thurman versus Jose Cito Lopez. Here's the problem, Jose. Does Keith Thurman fight anymore? I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? But when he's ready to come back, I'm right here waiting oh, for him. Wow. I, I've been in the gym and I'm ready to go. Uh, I, That'd be a, definitely a fight that, that I would want to do, and I'm ready for it. And we take a look at some of this action. Boy, I got to tell you, Padilla's chin has been certainly impressive. Yeah, Padilla's taken some really good shots by Ruben, and you know what? Ruben has reacted really well in, in his five, uh, in his sixth fight. Um, he's, he's handling the pressure really well, and uh, some big shots by, uh, by Padilla as well. Real quickly, Mikey Williams asks, who's going to win the 140-pound World Boxing Super Series Tournament? Now, I'll go on the record now. I will say Josh Taylor. Anyway, round number three here. Ruben Torres, Bogar, Padilla scheduled for four here at the Double Tree in Ontario, California. Ooh. Really good left hook by Torres to the body. Left hook up top and left hook up to the bo uh, down to the body. You know, I know one thing that Zamora is going to keep working on with Torres is distance and spacing, making sure that Torres can box. And I think this is why you're not going to be able to knock over everybody. There are going to be times when you face a guy who simply isn't going to go anywhere. Yeah, I think that, that grows with experience. You're going to have to be patient and uh, keep on picking at him until you find the, the time to go in for the kill. Yeah, Ruben's 5-0 and with five knockouts, uh, you know, so this uh, has probably gone far uh, longer than most of his fights, but uh, he's fighting really smart, being patient, picking his, his, his shots, and uh, and uh, even though Padilla's hanging in there tough, taking some big punches and still swinging some of his own. Good straight right hand by Torres, but Padilla is undaunted. As you fought a guy like this early in your career who you're beating, but is so pesky, what's going through your mind during the fight? Especially if you're landing a lot of shots, you just think, go down already. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm hitting you with some really hard shots and you're not going down. This is a game fighter, man, and not, not every fighter is going to go down uh, when, when you connect them clean, and this is one of those fighters. But exchange, exchange punches on the inside. Torres still very sharp, but boy, this Padilla. This guy is tougher than a $2 steak, as they used to say. But these are the type of fights you're really going for, them, isn't it? You know what? If uh, this fight continues the way it's going, this is actually the most, the perfect fight for Ruben Torres to gain experience yeah. and, and, and help him out in his near future. This is the type of fights that, that, that you need. Based on this performance, I think Padilla is going to be on the minds of a lot of matchmakers. And if you have a young guy and you want to get some rounds and test the kid, uh, I, I would dial up old Boger. Absolutely. Uh, th this guy just keeps on coming. He's coming forward, uh, lands uh, some punches, and, and, and is able to take some as well. 
And that's it, three down, one to go. Young Ruben Torres being extended for the first time in his professional life. Uh, AP Solis says, when is Lopez back in the ring? He's watching from San Luis Obispo. Uh, I guess you said oh, a fall return sometime in October, right? Yeah, it looks like I might have, be having a date sometime in October. I'm ready to go, and uh, hopefully I get a shot at uh, one of the world champs or a really big fight. But you want to make it clear, Keith, once upon a time Thurman, the Riverside Rocky is waiting for you, and also Nancy Rodriguez from the WBC. Hola. Also, Nicholas Diaz is watching. Destiny Cortez from Midland, Texas. Hey, Nancy, how you doing? Oh, by the way, Matt McGovern wants you to know he has a big sponsor that wants to do a big show. So, hook up with them there. Yeah, get, get to me, uh, Josecito909 at <laughs> yahoo.com. Let's talk business. Ooh. Ooh. Really nice left hook uh, by Padilla starting off the round. Uh, really got a... Uh, Torres' attention. Well, I think he's up 3 nothing, but Torres still has to mind his P's and Q's defensively here. You know, I don't know if you'd consider a four-round fight going into the deep end, but he certainly got out of the kiddie pool tonight. <laughs> yes, you know what? Uh, Padilla has been hanging in there tough. Uh, he, he's got a four-rounder, and he's fighting for his life right now. Uh, he knows that... Uh, a win against, a uh, big upset against the Torres will, will get him into some bigger fights. But Torres hanging in there tough and uh, really showing uh, his uh, experience. Boy, th those punches from Torres, though, just come out so smooth and explosively. Yeah, he has some really good crisp punches. Uh, you know, mid-distance, I, I would say, is best distance for him. He, you can't keep him on the outside too long. He, he really likes to get in there and bang. So mid-distance range, uh, he, he lands some really good punches. A fight going really well. I think the uh, only difference that I would make with Torres is he needs to pop some more jabs, yeah. man. Uh, keep him at bay and then uh, land his combination. Well, you know, when I was with uh, Zamora and Torres at the Santa, Santa Fe Springs Activity Center on Monday, that's the one thing Zamora, I think, really stresses is controlling guys with the jab and controlling distance, especially with Ruben. Again, he's only 20 years old. He's still very green in this business. Yeah, very early on in his career, and uh, these are the fights that are, uh, are going to make him better and make him learn. Padilla still coming forward, and uh, Ruben Torres is letting off his punches, combinations. Mosey when you went the distance for the first time, did you clear a mental hurdle? Uh, you know what? It wasn't until uh, my second fight that I went to a four-round fight, but, oh, Torres connected a punch. Uh, well, the mouthpiece is out for the third time, but they're not going to call a halt to the action until there's a pause. Torres, and uh, they do now with 17 seconds to go. And we'll see if there's a point deduction. Again, this is the third time this has happened with Bogar Padilla. And they do take away a point, and it could be academic, given the fact Torres is probably well ahead in this fight. All right, last 10 seconds of the round. Here we go. And it happened again. I don't think I've ever seen a four-rounder where a guy loses his gum shield four times. Right, and it doesn't seem to be intentional yeah. as well. And there you have it, Ruben Torres going the route in his sixth professional bout. Probably won every round and we have a point deduction, but he'll tell you that that was a very, very hard, tough night for that young man. Yeah, Ruben Torres had to work a little bit. Bogar Padilla came to fight and uh, really hung in there. Oh, 
Oh, by the way, Boxing Rokas wants to know, when is Jose Sita going to be on the Boxing Rundown? Your presence is requested there, champ. <laughs> yes, uh, you know what? Uh, I should be fighting in October. I'm in preparation. I'm getting ready and I uh, should have a big fight coming up soon and uh, be amongst the, the world champs. And Ryan Scalia, Viva in Canada. What's up, Canada? All right, looks like the scorecards are added up. Let's send it up to Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, after going to distance here at the Double Tree, Ontario, all three judges turn in identical scorecards of 40 to 35 in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Representing South Central LA, Ace Ruben Torres. All right, Ruben Torres runs his record to six and